The Husqvarna Viking Designer Brilliance 80 comes loaded with accessories. So when you open it fresh out of the box, it comes in a zippered pouch. But I'm gonna show you what each of the accessories are, plus where to put them so they all fit in the accessory box. So this is a great way to stay organized and then also know if, uh, once you use something, if you know where to return it, you seem to keep things all in place. It's like being organized. If you have a place to put it, you'll put it back. So just in no particular order, I'm gonna just start reaching in and pulling accessories out. So first off, we have a straight stitch throat plate. Now this is something you'll see me use when I do uh, quarter inch seams when we do embroidery and also when we free motion quilt. So it's got a single hole that really stabilizes the needle for the best looking stitch. Now, another thing nice about the straight stitch throat plate that comes with this machine is that it's censored. That means as soon as I pop it on, the machine knows to make sure that I have not picked a stitch that goes side to side, which would break the needle. It'll keep the needle center position, straight stitch only. So embroidery straight up and down, piecing those blocks, those are a great thing to use. If you want accurate quarter inch seam allowances. The embroidery foot, we'll show you later how to put this on. There's a little trick to it, but I'm going to just put it into the back for right now. Uh, the buttonhole foot is another one that I also put into the back because it's kind of got a foot, a sensor wheel, and a plug-in. This plug-in goes right behind the machine here, and then that way we can actually tell the machine what size of button we are wanting a buttonhole to be, and it'll just stitch it. Super easy. Um, a screen uh, cleaning, so a nice little wipe that you can keep kind of the static off of it. Um, excess, uh, needles, a nice little variety pack. Now we'll talk needles throughout these videos, but in here there is stretch needles, jeans needles, embroidery needles, a wing needle, and all different sizes of universal needles. So once again, kind of sliding those bigger items into the back. Speaking of bigger items, do you know this machine actually comes with a walking foot? So this is awesome. That is an option, usually an optional accessory. So I'm gonna just slide it into the back and it is the one that actually allows you to switch the soles out. So they just actually pop off the bottom and you can add an open toe foot. Watch, magnetic off and on, no screws, drivers or screws needed. Um, a, a guide, so if you like to stitch in the ditch, that's great. There's uh, ones with quarter inch seam markings all over the place, which is great for putting binding on. I love it. Now there is a key to putting the walking foot on. That part there needs to go up and around the needle screw. So you can't just attach it. You actually need to attach it not only on the side, but also in the right location. So there's a little trick for that. Uh, oh, my multi-purpose tool. So four thing, three things that this can be used for. Um, first off, your needles, as you take them in and out, see that little hole there? You can drop the needle down. Flat side will stay to the back as you hold it and you can lift the needle out and you can also catch it when you're taking your needle out of the machine so it doesn't drop down into the throat plate or bobbin area. It's also thick on one side, thinner on the other. This is great tool. We'll show you for going up and over a very thick jeans hem or thick seam. And then also if you wanna add a shank to a button when you sew the button on, this is a spacer for that actual shank. You have two seam guides. So you have a right one and a left one that can be used with the walking foot. That is awesome. So I'm glad that they include those. Um, you do get seam ripper and brush. Speaking of brush, we will show you exactly how to clean this machine. That's something you need to do about every three to four bobbins as you're sewing. There's a lot of lint that gets down in here. I need you to follow good cleaning practices and this machine will love you forever. So so we'll just slide those also into the back. You're gonna notice you have a variety of different spool caps. Um, a couple of them are actually on the machine when they come and even a kind of a pad that you can put, like even when you flip this little vertical spool pin up that the spool doesn't spin really fast. Once again, I don't always use those. I'll show you why um, as we get going but those are included. Thread nets, same thing. Um, good to have, never know when you need them. If you ever have a spool of thread that just kind of wants to fall off or puddle, these nets can contain them and make them play nicely with your sewing machine. I've also found that sometimes metallic thread likes to have a little wrap to it. So keep those thread nets handy. I have even been known to cut them in half if I uh, needed something for a smaller spool. 
Okay, now we're getting to the things that I like to keep up front. Uh, this screwdriver uh, doesn't really have a place up front. You are going to be using this quite a bit, but I'll put it in the back for now. You get a ton of bobbins. So bobbins are actually going to fit in this nice little um, kind of snap holder. They don't rotate. They're not going to unwind your thread. They're just going to easily slip in here. But do you know this can actually come out? So if you're winding a bunch of bobbins and want to do this or have this somewhere else, you can take this whole thing out and place it where you'd like to keep it. Uh, bobbins, they are specific to the Viking, so you do need to not mix and match from other machines. That is a no-no. Every machine has kind of a different size of bobbin for their machine, so it's just, you got to use the Viking bobbins. Okay, here's one more small spool cap. There was some other larger ones. That's the smaller one. You tend to match that to the spool size that you're using, and they drop on the floor easily, so put that in the back. All right, um, feet. Oh, there is the wa um, the <laughs> with the walking foot. I didn't see this earlier, but I was hoping that was in there. It's the one with the, all the quarter inch marks, and then that way, again, having accurate quarter inch left, right, front, back, all directions. That goes on the walking foot. Just snaps on like I showed you that they come off. So the standard foot A is on the machine and the machine is going to tell you which foot to use as you pick a stitch. There is a quarter inch foot, so there is an easy to follow, put that on. Um, there's an A foot and a B foot, very similar. They look different though on the underneath side because this has the cutout. That cutout is for all, a lot of your decorative stitches. Again, always easy to throw on the floor. Okay, so let's put those, that's why we need to have a home for them. Now there's one spot right here. I'm gonna actually take the accessory box off and show you what I'm looking at. So right here, can you see that little kind of indent? That one is for the manual buttonhole foot. And the manual buttonhole foot has that little extra peg out the back. But if you set it right in there, it was perfectly positioned so the case will actually close. So if you ever have that in some other place, there's not enough room for it to actually close in place. That has its exact location. So why do you need a manual buttonhole foot? We will show you. Um, it lets you do buttonholes that are longer than it's designed to do. Or if you're having like a button a hole that you need to kind of repair, you need to do just a certain part of it. Okay, foot S. Foot S is really wide. That's a foot that's gonna be used to go side to side. Notice some of these openings have a little wider position. That's why that one is gonna go down towards the end. Along with the zipper foot, zipper foot E. This is actually looks kind of funny because you can attach it on the left or the right, depending on what side of the zipper you're following. So again, place it down in the other part. Foot J is an overlock foot, so it has a nice little small pin. We'll talk about that when we do overlock stitches, where the, the stitch can jump over that pin and then not curl the fabric. If you've ever done a zigzag with the standard foot and that edge kind of gets a little not, it doesn't stay flat. This is the foot that you should be using when you do that. A blind hem foot, foot D, D is in dog. It is the perfect foot for doing blind hems. We'll do that as well. Foot R can be used for free motion. Uh, as you would like. And then foot uh, H is a non-stick foot. It's kind of got a white underneath and very slip. So if you are working with vinyl, leather, anything with a sticky surface that might not let the foot glide, that is the foot you want to use. So once again, we are fully loaded up. There are two little things still in the package. And speaking of a non-stick foot, these are non-stick Call them stickers. So you can make, say, a zipper foot non-stick. It's got a good slick coating here. So you place these on the underneath side of, say, a zipper foot or an overlock foot, and you can actually take care of the stitches and, and use the foot you desire. So especially if you buy other feet, accessory feet, like a couching foot or pin tuck feet, you never know what you're gonna be wanting to do. Who says you can't do pin tucks on leather? Well, probably not the way you think they can, but a really soft leather, I bet we could. All right, so I'm gonna put those in the back. They'll kind of, kind of find their way to the bottom. But look, everything fits. So when you put your case on or go somewhere, slide that accessory box on, then you'll have all your tools all in one place.